Okay, tonight I want to talk about some easy modifications you can do to your Mosin Nagant to make it more user-friendly and accurate and overall effective. Um, now this, this rifle that I've got in pieces here um, started its life out as a Mosin, uh, the M9130. Um, you've, got, you've, got uh, you've got your hex receiver. Uh, and the low wall cut um, it was actually a pretty nice rifle but uh, it didn't have any distinctive markings on it that made it really a collector's item at all um, let's see I believe it was stamped like 1934 I want to say and it was from the uh, the Tula Arsenal um, now, as soon as I post this, I'm going to get a comment saying uh, 1934 from the Tula Arsenal was like one of the most rare Nagants, and I'm going to be kicking myself for doing this, but that's okay. Uh, what's done is done, and if you're a Mosin purist, then that's that's okay. Um, I am too, just not with this rifle. Um, <clears throat> um, but the purpose of this uh, video is just to kind of go over some simple simple things that you can do to make your Mosin more user friendly and all around awesome um, the first thing I did when I decided to modify this gun was I wanted to figure out a way to mount a scope now I did extensive research online and found that uh, um, you know under this under your rear sight there is a 3 8 inch dovetail um, that the the sight block actually mounts to now if you go to Walmart and get uh, some air gun scope rings with this corresponding um, dovetail mount size uh, all you have to do to make them work on a high powered rifle is basically use a drill or a dremel tool to cut out a little notch to where you can use one of the original pins out of the sight block to drive through creating a mechanical lock and that will keep your scope from wanting to slide forward off of that rail um, it's extremely easy I mean you could do it in an hour if you took your time um, <clears throat> the next thing I did was I wanted to get rid of the uh, the crappy trigger uh, the sloppy trigger and you know I mean they're military style triggers they are what they are they did exactly what they were intended to do but that wasn't what I was wanting out of this rifle um, so I mean I spent I spent days polishing and tuning and bending and everything else on that trigger and uh, just never could get it quite to where I wanted so I found uh, I found the uh, Timney trigger, which mine's got a whole lot of overspray from spray paint that I've I've painted. This whole rifle's uh, finished in spray paint. It's a great rust retardant, and it is very durable, and it kicks Duracoats. But, um, but anyway, back to the trigger. Um, I, I decided to make, take the extra expense and get a good trigger because I knew this was going to be a rifle that I actually wanted to use. Um, and so, two benefits of having this, you get a much, 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 much better trigger pull. Um, I'm not going to say it's match grade, but it's close. Um, <clears throat> and also you get this very usable Remington 700-esque safety. Um, the only real modification you have to do with your rifle is you have to absolutely uh, eat the entire inside of your stock out and you know just recessing and making room for it to actually go down in um, which I did that with a Dremel tool not even using the right kind of attachment um, in probably I don't know a couple hours um, so that was that was that so I solved my sight problem I solved my trigger problem um, basically when you get this unless you want to go into doing a lot of um, a lot of invasive stuff you'll never really get the uh, the stock sights to be completely 100% on uh, they weren't designed to shoot 
point of impact than they were designed to shoot with the bayonet on. So without the without the bayonet on, you're not going to be zeroed, and you're never going to really get it to shoot where you want anyway. So <clears throat> I decided just to forego the iron sights completely and start with a scope which this is kind of a placeholder scope right now it's an NC star two power long eye relief scope which I want to put something better on it because I mean to be honest with you this rifle really does deserve it um, once I once I shorten this barrel down to this length and then uh, shimmed the receiver which I'll get into in a minute uh, my groups went down from somewhere around six inches to probably close to two to three inches so it was it was well worth the effort um, <clears throat> let's see what next um, the only other real modification I've done to the metal is I cut this little notch out of the magazine just because I on this particular rifle I was having problems with the uh, the rimmed cartridges getting like jammed up in there so they just needed a little bit extra room to kind of work and for whatever reason that actually solved the problem um, let's see I mean you can and you can see the the paint on here looks basically just like you know uh, standard your standard military finish anyway um, I'm still using the uh, the standard military issue screws that came with it. Um, haven't done any sort of like pillar bedding or anything like that to it. Um, now, as I mentioned earlier, uh, shimming the stock or uh, shimming the receiver. Basically, all that entails is cutting some shims out of some thin. Sh sheet metal, sheet aluminum, maybe some brass, whatever you've got laying around um, to fit right down in the uh, in the chamber recess, in the uh, in the recoil lug recess, right behind the recoil lug recess, and finally one that goes around the uh, around the uh, rear screw there. Um, and I actually went so far as to epoxy all of those to the to the stock um, although I don't have them in there right now I had I, I was using some uh, solvent of uh, some paint stripper to actually get the the finish down to where I wanted it <clears throat> and that ate the epoxy out from under them they <clears throat> they fell out and I just haven't gotten around to replacing them yet um, let's see on the stock uh, Next thing I did was I I was trying to follow the uh, uh, Jeff Cooper's um, scout rifle idea and philosophy and his parameters when I was designing this rifle or not designing but kind of redesigning I don't know what you'd call it but um, so the weight was a big concern so I basically just uh, bored out the back of the stock there. A little bit uh, shortened it an inch to accommodate the added length of pull that the limb saver recoil pad added um, just because I like short length of pulls I don't um, I mean if it had of had had the stock and then the extra that just would have been too long for me um, personal preference there um, and also I filled in the uh, lightning cuts with with uh, liquid wood whatever um, wood filler and I didn't really put any effort into sanding and smoothing as you can tell because to be honest with you I'm going to be I'm going to be switching this stock out for one of the Boyd's laminate stocks uh, probably the pepper laminate um, but for the time being I just decided to make it closer to what I was wanting um, also I added an end cap uh, because once I shortened it, it ended up being too short and rounded and looked ridiculous and I just didn't care for that very much. So I added this end cap that actually starts right in front of this uh, sling swivel here and goes all the way forward. Um, I found uh, a video that Larry Potterfield did showing how to do the, um, like the 
the ebony four end caps and I just kind of used that concept to do this. Um, what what little barrel channel there is left has been completely free floated doesn't touch the barrel at all um, normally that wouldn't be good on a Mosin but one that's got a barrel that's this short doesn't have enough flex for it to matter um, and uh, that's that's about it on the stock and that and the uh, the next thing I did was I decided to bend down the bolt handle uh, which and actually extended it a good bit and that gave me more leverage on the bolt handle made it much easier to s use and ac actually extract uh, stuck casings if I need to um, basically what this this part here down to here is just a, a steel bolt that I got at a hardware store welded to it bend it down bend it out and then we reattached the uh, the ball that came off of the uh, original bolt handle back on <clears throat> and that's more or less all I've done to the bolt other than I lightened the uh, I cut a couple coils off the uh, recoil spring which I actually don't recommend doing that um, because you'll end up if you go too far you're going to have all sorts of function issues and reliability issues and that's just not good so um, I also added the uh, onboard ammo carry as per Cooper's parameters for a scout rifle. Um, I added installed sling swivels front and back and that that just makes it much easier than trying to use the old sling sling uh, holes which the front one's missing anyway because it would have been out here somewhere. Um, so yeah that's pretty much I believe that's pretty much everything I've done um, oh yeah I don't know if I mentioned this or not um, what this is is it's an AK-74 muzzle brake from TAPCO like this one and I couldn't find anybody to thread this barrel for me to the uh, appropriate thread pitch so being the uh, stubborn person that I am I just went ahead and had it welded on and so far I've been diligent about cleaning the inside the expansion chamber what little of what little of one there is and uh, clean if you keep that cleaned out you don't have to worry about the corrosive ammo and all that stuff like gomming it up on the inside it's just a matter of cleaning um, so yeah, I mean, all of all of these modifications that I've done have been over the course of probably a three month period and during that time I did a lot of experimenting with other ideas and a bunch of stuff that just didn't work and just wasn't good. And um, so I thought I'd save you guys kind of the heartache of having to figure out what works and what doesn't and just kind of maybe give you sort of an idea of some ideas that actually work pretty well in my experience anyway um, ooh, one thing I forgot is for the uh, the bent down bolt you have to recess out the uh, the stock just a little bit um, which is very easily done with a Dremel tool um, and so that's uh, I mean that's that's five minutes tops um, and the finish, this finish is some black wood stain, furniture grade wood stain, um, and I think there might be a coat of spray paint on top of that. Uh, the metal finish is all um, matte black uh, spray paint. I don't, I don't use Duracoat or anything like that. Um, I Duracoated. Uh, Dura coated my AK and ended up not liking it one bit, so I probably won't use that anymore. Um, and yeah, uh, that's pretty much the end of the story. If you guys have any questions, feel free to email me. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And I mean, I love talking about this kind of stuff. I'm one of my uh, one of my favorite pastimes is gunsmithing. Um, some people think I like to gunsmith more than I like to shoot, but that's not true. But anyway, I'll catch you guys later, and as always, thanks for watching.